So, Brian, let's start with what the podcast is about. Many people are familiar with Serial, which really focused on a crime, and it seems that that was the initial motivation here, but it, it, it sort of morphed into a look at the man who drew your attention in the first place. What persuaded you to move into that narrative? Um, I mean, a couple things. I was always interested in in John B. McElmore, who you know was the tipster in this case. He was an interesting person to talk to, and I would never have just done the crime story without talking about him too. He was just too fascinating of a person, and I enjoyed talking to him too much. Um, and so he was always going to be a part of the story. Um, but then, as I got into investigating the crime, the initial crime that he'd um, contacted me about wasn't exactly what it had seemed at the beginning. And um, and so my interest moved away from that. And then meanwhile, other things happened in the story that that just seemed more you know important that really changed the course of the story. Even the small part that we heard from him uh, just before our conversation, you could tell that he's got, a, you know, call it a love hate relationship with his small town. And there's so much focus right now on how the news media in general has covered and illustrated small town America this kind of quick boomerang reaction to the, the allegation that it wasn't covered at all properly in the run-up to the election, now has people saying, well, it's become, you know, it's kind of an ugly term, but poverty porn or it's redneck chic. How did you resist being pulled into that trap? Do you think you were? I mean, I don't think I was. I mean, many of the people that are in the story are not in poverty, so it doesn't even apply to this story. Um, I think it's a weird framing that, like, um, I don't know. I think it's. A, I think it speaks to the failure of the news media in general that this is one of the only framings that can be brought on this story, which is not about that at all. Um, it's about like full people living interesting, complicated lives in a place in the world that happens to be in the South in America, which and I happen to be from the North, and so somehow there's this very two-dimensional like discussion that's imposed on something that I think is much more complicated than that. And does it suggest that we're, in fact, not moving the conversation forward because it is this kind of polar, okay, it's someone from the big city who goes to a small town and, and has kind of an, uh, an experience there, that we're still having the same kind of illustration of small town as we were maybe a year ago? I mean, I don't think that our show illustrates small towns that way. And that's, well, I don't think our story is that. It's talking about individuals' lives, and they live in this place, and that's where their lives take place. Um, you know, and then some of the discussion, I mean, a lot of people are getting that from the story, absolutely. And, and I'm really grateful for that. But there's this corner of the media that, like, you know, tends to frame it in this kind of north-south, like, liberal, conservative way, which isn't our framing at all. So I don't know what that says, but it's certainly not what I'm interested in as a journalist, quite honestly, personally. And as a journalist, I mean, if you, if any of us are doing our job right, we can tell a story about anyone. Everybody has a good story to tell. What is it about this guy in particular that you think is meaningful for all of us to hear? I mean, well, first of all, I believe everybody has a story, but I don't believe everybody has a story that should be told on the radio. That's a firm belief of mine. I mean, and that's a lot of the work we do here at This American Life, where, where I, you know, where my day job is. Um, is sifting through the stories that we think are, are you know, worth being on the radio. Um, I mean, what John had, J John saw the world in a much more dramatic and fascinating way than many people do. And so he was able to draw you in with his descriptions of his town. Um, but he was also very emotional deep down, but would try to hide it. Um, he was, um, you know, brilliant and tortured and funny and darkly funny. Um, and he did invite me into, you know, a very specific place that, you know, isn't the easiest place to go into as a journalist and really was unfiltered in sharing about that place and introduced me to other people who were unfiltered. So in that way, it was kind of just a journalist's dream in that, you know, he was just giving me his unfiltered opinions and gossip and things he was hearing about in this, you know, town of a little more than a thousand people in Alabama and introducing me to people there and, you know, and things started happening. Um, and so I'm grateful to him for that. Well, and it's, it's already a tremendous success, as we said earlier. So congratulations on that. Thank you. I appreciate it.